Who am I? Um, honestly, I hate being asked this question because I never know how to answer it. Uh, to know who I am is honestly just to get to know me, to be honest. I hate trying to describe who I am. But I figured uh, this should be the first chapter in the book uh, to give people an idea about the type of person I am, or at least an idea of the type of person I am, to then help people understand where I'm coming from, where I came from, in terms of the whole scenario with Cecilia and the rest of the Krugator killers. Why I did what I did, how it affected me, my perspective and my view on things and so on. I figured trying, at least trying to explain who I am in a nutshell, should at least to some degree help. I don't even know where to begin, to be honest. Um, so who am I? Well, let's see. Other people have described me most of my life, or all of my life, actually, as extremely innocent, um, very ignorant. Uh, mostly, those two mostly, well, innocent because... I'm never out to harm or uh, use or abuse or do do in anybody in any way. So I automatically assume that no one would do the same to me. I have a very caring and loving outlook on the world and to the people around me. And I honestly don't ever expect people to do the same. I just honestly can't comprehend being any other type of person. So I then can't comprehend that other people are like this, even though I know people are like this. I'm ignorant because, well, adding to what I've just said, and also I grew up very boxed in. Um, because of my dad, but so I didn't I didn't get to experience a lot of life. Uh, so then I didn't get to see how people do things, why people do things, how people manipulate, control, and so on. I'm very oblivious most of the time, actually the majority of the time, to pretty much everything actually. Uh, I've been told, mostly by my dad, most of my life, that I live in a world of my own, but if, you're, if you've been boxed off your entire life, you kind of have no other alternative but to create a world of your own. And I guess being raised like that, I then carried on living in a world of my own. Although, obviously, I haven't experienced dramatic sides of life later on especially since the Krugersdorp killers and scenarios after, it moulded or rather changed me in a lot of ways. Uh, I would say they would be positive ways at least. Um, but back to who I am. Uh, oh, I hate this topic. I am... Uh, going back to even school days, I think... Whenever there would be times, you know, when the teacher would say, okay, describe your classmates or the person next to you in one word. And this actually, this type of scenario even continued up into my uh, early 20s. Uh, the, the, there was a few couple of words that people constantly used, and it was... Kind, caring, loving, generous. I was always confused why those few words stuck. Um, partly also wondering, you know, is that all that people see? Is there, you know, isn't there more to me? Uh, or are you not that bothered that you kind of all stick to the same word or words? Not that most of these people even knew each other all those years apart. But... 
I mean, looking back on my life, especially since the group is all killers, having those traits being overly caring, overly kind, overly loving, even though it can be a very good thing, it is also one thing that tends to get me in trouble. Because if you combine that with being too innocent and too ignorant, that's when I end up being used by people and abused by people. Um, a lot of people, especially since my early 20s, have described me as an easy target because of all of these characteristics. People that are always up to, well, people always, people who always have hidden agendas, they see me as an easy target because I don't realize when other people want to use me and then they just manipulate me into getting whatever they want and I fall for it because, like I said, I don't expect someone else to lie to me and to use me because I just would never do that to anybody else. I mean, I'm the type of person who uh, com completely loathes lying. I, yeah, I, I think I could say I'm, I'm too honest, not in a bad way, but if someone asks me something, uh, even if it's as in a scenario where I've done something or said something and I didn't want the other person to know but they did know and find out and then they ask me I actually do admit to it every single time I don't go and cover up with a lie that's how how much I live by honesty and truthfulness but also you know bearing in mind I am human <laughs> but I yeah, I just, I don't know, my, my outlook on life is, it is, a, it's a very innocent one. Um, very ignorant one, unfortunately. Although, in the last decade, that has molded me to become a wiser person. But I honestly hate, it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because I hate having to second guess people. Especially when my gut start screaming at me. I've had to start learning to my gut instinct. I mean, when I first met Cecilia, my gut screamed at me, run. And I did not. Because I felt like I was judging Cecilia and I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. And often through my life, my gut instinct, actually every time in my life, my gut instinct has been right. But most of the time, I've just never listened to it. Um, and that's gotten me into so much trouble. So, now I'm back, kind of battling not to jump off topic, yeah. But, okay, so who am I? I, I don't want to go into too much detail because this book is not about me. It's about my experience, yes, um. And things like that, but to describe me as a person, I don't want to go into too much detail. And I'm not sure if I would ever write a book about me. I'm not sure if I'm ready for something like that. Because I went through a lot pretty much as soon as I ended up on this planet. And life has put me in so many scenarios since I was a child to protect those that I cared about, even as a child, even as young as about four years old. Yeah, four years old. Actually, I think it probably <clears throat> even began at three years old. But the early me earliest memory is about four years old. Protecting people I love and care about, protecting animals I love and care about because it was ultimately life and death situations in most of them 
and I learned since about three, four years old to rather put my life on the line to protect what I love than to stand by watching something that I love or someone that I love be hurt or even be killed. And uh, when I was five years old, <clears throat> but even before five years old, I had already witnessed that no matter how much I protected or tried to protect someone or something, things are out of my control. And no matter what promises I made <clears throat> in order to protect, I can't always save. But at such a young age, it was embedded in me. No matter how hard I tried, and believe me, I tried, um, in times where I should have actually died, even at that age, um, since that age, actually, I still ended up seeing the people and the animals that I was trying to protect, I, s I saw them die, and in front of me, and in my arms. And I'm not going f further into that topic right now, but because of the dramatic experiences since early childhood, which continuously went on, and felt like there was not even a five minute breather in between them for the vast majority of my life this pretty much molded me into the person I am overly loving, overly caring and overly protective and willing to do anything literally anything to protect the ones that I care about, the ones that I love and it didn't matter what it cost me, even if it cost me my life. And more so because, and even other people have said this to me as well, that because I didn't manage, I didn't manage to keep my promises as a four-year-old in specific, uh, to protect and to save the one that I loved and the ones that I loved and the animals that I loved those promises uh, felt like broken promises which ended up becoming embedded regrets I guess subconsciously and eventually when I realized it consciously obviously and it then pretty much molded me into wanting to rescue and save it almost feels like I, uh, I want to do that with everybody um, I'm always trying to help somebody in some way and then eventually along the line I had to learn to decipher who was really needing help and who was uh, not needing help I'd never really mastered knowing the difference because, again, I was too loving, too caring, too ignorant and to know the difference or to believe actually more so that people were capable of manipulating others into believing <laughs> that they needed help. Meantime, they actually didn't. And um, it took a decade of experiences, I suppose, to try and break that, or I wouldn't say it's broken out of me, but to help me grow wiser into knowing that people are not always who they say they are, and they're not, who is, not always who they pretend to be. And even though I don't think and act, like the vast majority of the world it doesn't mean that you know it, they not like me um, 
And honestly, I hate it. I hate it. I hate having to second guess people. And it leaves me with a lot of questions why there's no common decency, no... I don't understand why people do things like this. Or simply, I guess, because I could never even fathom or comprehend coming close to doing something as even a tiny fraction of anything minor of what these people do. And like I said, I, <laughs> I battle to even lie, so anything more than that is a just impossible to my mind. And I don't pretend to be perfect, believe me, I'm very quick to admit and point out my faults. A lot of people have stated in my life that um, I seem to be so perfect, but really I'm not. I'll give you a good couple of pages as a start of faults and flaws. Um... But I think it's just because of the way I was raised and the experiences I had since I was so young. Experiences that never stopped, basically. And, you know, uh, I honestly don't know how to describe myself as a person. Uh, I mean, I, I know who I am, but I just don't know how to describe myself. It's easier to say who I'm not than who I am. But I suppose maybe in just saying these few things, it might help people understand where I'm coming from, or where I came from at least, in terms of this whole scenario with Cecilia and the rest of her group. And I suppose even for... <laughs> the entire decade that it carried on through I'm not I even though I a lot of people or at least a fair amount of people say I think it's actually contrasting statements at first glance people say I look fragile that I need to <laughs> I've even had the ridiculous statements where People say they want to put me in a box or lock me up somewhere to protect me from the world because I look so fragile, so innocent. And that's just that first glance, first meeting. But once they get to know me, person after person keeps telling me how strong I am, how brave I am, how they don't know how I actually got through even a fraction of my life, never mind everything. Um, I don't count myself as brave. I don't count myself as strong. I never had any other choice in my life. I mean, people act like it was a choice when they make statements. I never chose to go through anything of what I did. Okay, well, with a, a vast majority, at least as a child. But... I had no choice, it was either sink or swim, survive or die, so I learned to fight, and in trying to fight, yes, there was many times where I wanted to drown as well, too many times to be honest, I just wanted to give in and throw in the towel, but underlying every conscious thought in those moments was the subconscious thought for never giving in, and never giving up, and even when I wholeheartedly wanted to give up, there was just something in me that just never would. So, I guess that's how I'm still standing today, and that that is one of the reasons why I chose to be part of the case for the Krugersdorp killers because even though I couldn't protect the people that were already killed I wanted to speak up for them still I wanted to speak up for the families that were affected 
I wanted to protect others who I would never even meet, who I would never even know about, to just so that they would never be harmed. I mean, even when I left Cecilia back in 2010, since then, I desperately wanted to stop her from what she was doing. I wanted to save anybody and everybody she ever met. And at that point, I didn't even really know the full extent of what was going on. So once I finally actually really knew the full truth, once the case started, my drive to try and save the world <laughs> only grew so much stronger. Despite the fact that it would have put my life at risk. I never... I never count any cost when it comes to my life. I never... It's not that I don't see value in it. I just see more value in others' lives. So laying down my life for someone else's, even if I don't even know their names, never see their faces, I would still do that. Because I know what it's like to go through pain at the very least. And I mean, I've had a lifetime of that. And I never want anybody to experience even a fraction of what I have. So I would do anything, even if it's putting my life on the line, where a group of serial killers is out to kill me. And possibly, not possibly, actually ha does have hitmen that are still out there, still looking for me and some others. I, despite all of that, I still chose and I still choose to speak up. And I will continuously speak up for as long as I'm still alive. I will never back down, not because I'm strong, not because I'm brave. Just because no one deserves to go through pain. No one deserves to be hurt. No one deserves... To to go through devastation. No one deserves to be manipulated, lied to. So, that's who I am, I guess. To know me is to know my heart. It's not the outside appearance. I, at, at first glance or first encounters, I make a lot of jokes. I might come across very light-hearted. Um, that's only a part of me. I'm actually a very intense and deep person. <laughs> a lot of people say they need... Too many people have actually said they need water wings to be around me. I never think on the surface. I never do anything just on the surface. I'm a very deep person. Everything I do, everything I say. But I think I make a lot of jokes because that seems to be the only thing people have managed to handle when it comes to me. Most people I know and most people I meet can't handle deep conversation or deep topics or anything of the sort and I it's for varying reasons so I have learned just to try and swim in the shallow end of things but I never like to stay there because I run in deep waters but yeah that is me in a short summary I don't know how else to describe me I just know I'm not like the rest of the world. I've been told that too many times, but I know it too. I don't plan on being like 
them either. I choose to be the difference. I choose to be the difference in someone's life, no matter what it costs me. I guess that's me, for now anyway. Till Yeah, that's me. <laughs>